Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, they deliberately scheduled this session for after lunch because they didn't want to ruin your appetite. <laughs> now, uh, plagiarism is clearly a very negative issue, but uh, Dr. Eggleston and I want to talk to you about it in a very positive vein. We want to prevent you from perhaps totally innocently making a major mistake with serious consequences. You don't want that to happen to you. I think you got a little hand out here. You should have this uh, that we handed out to you. Uh, before I even discuss, you probably all have a general idea of what plagiarism is, but before we discuss it specifically, we have to make one thing perfectly clear. There can be no doubt about this. Plagiarism, plagiarism is cheating. It is cheating. It's a violation of the academic honor code, and it carries serious consequences. So this is a big issue. Uh, you just need to pay, that you really need to pay attention to it. And I think all of you signed the pledge, did you not? You signed the college management pledge? Well, you know, that pledge says, uh, uh, I pledge that all academic work that I submit, I will neither give nor receive unauthorized aid. And it says, nor will I present another person's work as my own. That is what plagiarism is. It's presenting someone else's work as your work. And that is a violation of the academic code. It's cheating. It has serious uh, uh, consequences. And uh, in your academic code, they talk about various types of cheating. The first one that they list is plagiarism, right out of the, uh, the code uh, in the handbook that you have. And they define plagiarism as the use by paraphrase or direct quotation. We want to spend some time on that uh, because uh, most of the uh, problems occur with paraphrasing rather than direct quotation. But if you, if you directly quote from another source, you take it word for word and you don't cite it, that's plagiarism, that's cheating. But if you take an idea or a concept or data from another source and you, you rearrange it a little bit, restate it a little bit differently, but the concept came from this court, uh, source, it's not yours, you know what? If you don't cite that, that's plagiarism. And mostly, you, we encounter plagiarism because it's so tempting to cut and paste. Let's face it, in plain English, that's what it is. It's cutting and, cutting and pasting. You just go to the internet, find some good material on the subject, you cut it and paste it into your document, pass it off as your own, either deliberately or unintentionally, it's plagiarism, and you're gonna be in uh, a lot of difficulty uh, for that. So uh, whether it's a direct quote, or something that you've, an idea, a concept, a principle, a thought, that, an argument that you've taken from someone else, uh, maybe, maybe just summarized it from uh, some other source, uh, uh, that, uh, you know, and then placed it into your document, that has to be cited. And uh, uh, so let me talk a little bit about paraphrasing, which is a little bit more uh, complicated. Say that's paraphrasing, paraphrasing means you took an idea, a concept, uh, a statement, an argument, a theory from some other source. You maybe you restated it a bit, maybe you summarized it. You didn't, you know, you didn't copy the whole thing word for word, but it's basically someone else's idea, and you use it in your paper. That's fine, but you have to uh, decide it. And uh, actually, uh, you probably will want to get a, a copy of this, uh, the APA style manual. How many of you have this? How many of you heard of it? Right. Well, this is good to have because all of the papers that you write in college and management have to follow APA style. And in terms of references, citations, headings, uh, uh, tables, graphs, uh, you know, it covers uh, uh, all aspects of preparing a paper. So we'll, uh, we'll want to, you want to have this because uh, it will help you uh, throughout your uh, uh, t uh, tenure here at uh, Lawrence Tech and all the papers that you do. And um, in section one and section six, they also talk about, uh, uh, they talk about uh, plagiarism and paraphrasing. And uh, for instance, uh, here, here's what they say about uh, plagiarism. Uh, uh, copying the work of, uh, of work of others, their ideas, their theories, their research, background information, their definitions, and data. And when it comes to data, in addition to crediting the ideas of others, you must provide documentation, that means you must cite, provide a citation 
for all facts and figures that are not common knowledge. So if you said, hey, the uh, capital of Michigan is Lansing, that's common knowledge. You don't have to cite, cite that. But if you said the average income per capita in the state of Michigan is $26,748, you're going to have to cite that. Where did that information come from? So it's, it's not just ideas and thoughts, but it's also uh, data and information that is not common uh, knowledge. And, uh, in, and in terms of paraphrasing, uh, what I did here is, uh, con conveniently, I had uh, an article that I'm uh, writing on, uh, writing, and I just picked the one, this one page to, uh, to give you some ideas of paraphrasing. And uh, you can, uh, what you should be doing is you're going to have uh, professional articles assigned to you, readings for the class, right? Well, when you read it, don't just read it for context, but see what, how they use uh, uh, citations and quotations. See the style that these authors use, because I'm sure they're going to be consistent with APA style. Uh, but uh, on, on this one page, there's only one quotation which is cited, but there's eight citations where I've ta taken thoughts or ideas from other people. And in this 25-page paper, there are 26 citations. So whenever in doubt, cite. No one ever criticized you for too many citations. But when you don't get the citation, whether deliberately or innocently, it gives the impression that you're passing someone else's work off as your own, and that is cheating. Um, but this, let me give you uh, an example here. I won't drag this out. Um, here, here's one statement in this paper. It says, the result is most studies of leadership's impacts on performance ignore strategy and most studies of strategies' impacts on performance ignore leadership. Well, that's a statement. But how do I know that? What's, 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 what's the verification of that? How do I support that? Well, I've got two references. It's not a direct quotation, but it tells you the, if you go to these references, you'll find support for that statement. And I think you mentioned uh, self-plagiarism. Well, one of the references is to myself in a, in a prior article. Instead of presenting what I did in a prior article as new information, which would be self-plagiarism, I simply cite it myself in my, my prior article. Plus, citing yourself is very flattering. You want, you want to do that at any opportunity you get, right? Just keep citing yourself. It makes it sound very uh, distinguished. Uh, so uh, you do want to do use a lot of citations. You, error on the side of too many citations. No. You know, say when in doubt, if there's any doubt in your mind about whether I should cite this, cite it. You're not going to get in trouble for too many cites, but uh, you are going to get into serious trouble if you don't cite. Yes, sir. I'm going to have to check out plagiarism. How far is the plagiarism? Are you able to check it? Check it. Are we allowed to check it? Uh, yes, and uh, as soon as I get done here, Professor Eggleston is going to talk to you about something called safe assignment. And, uh, and uh, how to effectively use quotations and citations a little bit better. But safe assignment is a good way. Yes, absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, could one, um, um, how is this? Um, could one actually plagiarize himself? Yes. And that's what I was just talking about before. Uh, in this, in this uh, uh, article here, I, um, I, I do cite myself. Uh, uh, I do cite a study that I wrote uh, six months ago. I could have repeated the results from that study that I did six months ago, but then I would be presenting that as something that I just developed for this paper. I would be plagiarizing myself. So instead of doing that, I cite my earlier paper. And about, I don't think that's going to be a major issue for most of you unless you've got some, a number of prior publications in professional journals. Uh, the, the, that's not really going to be the, the problems you're going to have. The problems that I see as in, in the classrooms is strictly a cut and paste. You got a paper that's due or a take home exam or something and it's very tempting, it's very easy just to go on the internet find a good discussion of the topic, cut it and paste it and put it in your paper. Real easy to do, real tempting. Don't do it, because if you do it, you're going to get caught. It's very easy to detect, as Dr. Eggleston will show you, and uh, the consequences are severe. 
So, do we know what plagiarism is? And plagiarism is what? It's cheating. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. There'll be no excuses with your faculty. I didn't know, I didn't think, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna be in big trouble if uh, you're charged with uh, plagiarizing. And uh, the consequences are severe. If you plagiarize a paper or a test or a quiz, you're gonna fail that paper. You're probably gonna get a zero on it. You may fail the whole course. If uh, the professor feels that the plagiarism is really severe, he could give you an F for the whole course. You don't want that to happen. You're gonna to have to take this whole course over again, pay for it again, and do you want in your academic portfolio fail the course for violations of the honor code? You don't want that. And you know what? Uh, two violations of the honor code and see ya. You're out of this university. So I don't want to be dismal and downer here, though I'm an economist, so I'm kind of used to that. But I just want to make a point, right? It is severe. It is serious stuff. Don't mess with it. If you have any questions at all, do the citation. Or you can, there are ways you can talk with your professor. There are ways you can check it yourself to make sure that you are not uh, violating the, the honor code. Uh, so with that, I've, that's all I have to say, but Professor Eggleston is gonna to talk to you about how, we, how this uh, plagiarism can be easily documented and uh, talk to you about the use of quotations. And this book will help you a lot. It discusses plagiarism, citations, references, for, uh, formatting uh, your paper. So you, you will wanna get a copy of this. Yeah. Any possibility elements of the plagiarism? Is there any elements? There is a way for you to check uh, for the potential for plagiarism in your paper before, in, while it's still in draft form. We can't get to like a zero percent plagiarism. You can get a zero. No, you know, I, I the, the safe assignment, some after safe assignment score will show 25%. Yeah, oh yeah. And you yeah. really cite references and yeah. we know how to use safe assignment. We know when to call you on it versus what safe yeah, you'll, you'll get, you, you will get some percentage of your papers, I will say it. It doesn't really say it's plagiarized. It says that the material uh, is available elsewhere. You'll never get, I've never you know? seen a stage so, of zero. No, uh, not likely. I mean, you know, if, if, if you said, you know, uh, Lansing's the capital of Michigan, there's 50 states in the United States, you know, all that's going to come up. That's been cited elsewhere, right? That's not something you just came up with. And that might be caught on safe assignment, but that's not what's counted. The, the plagiarism is obvious. It's obvious. And I think uh, that'll be a good segue into uh, Dr. Eggleston. Uh, it is so obvious, you're gonna get nailed. And I'm just warning you right now. now. I hate to be so dismal, but you know, I give my class this lecture every semester. You know what? Somebody winds up in my office with tears in her eyes. It is serious business. You do not want to get into the, this situation. It's not worth it. Okay. So plagiarism, this is like an issue that we only care about in universities, right? Once you get done with your university career and you go out and you're working in business, they don't care anymore. Is that correct? What do you think? Who thinks that they do care outside? Do you have any examples? I would have got one ministry in some of their paper written as far as the validation methods and the technology. Okay. I'm sure that it counts there. Well, absolutely. And there are some really, really public examples of people that have plagiarized, have gotten caught, and have suffered some very serious consequences out in the real world. Uh, anybody know who Joe Biden is? Who's Joe Biden? The vice president. Do you know why he's not president? When Joe Biden was running for president several years ago, he was accused of plagiarizing part of his speeches. And the accusation was strong enough that Biden withdrew from the race. And that's why he never became president. The president of Texas 
the University of Texas San Antonio, the president of a state university, was forced to resign her position as president about six years ago because she may have plagiarized in her doctoral dissertation 25 years before. A reporter for the New York Times was found to be going on to uh, what's called The Wire. You know, there are lots of news services that are available. He was going on to the news wire and pulling down news articles from small reporters in different parts of the country and scratching out that person's name, putting his own name and presenting that as his own work. He was fired from the paper. It's happened to the Washington Post as well. And it's not just an issue in the United States. When you go back to your country, we've seen issues in Europe, in Africa, in Asia, in South America, where they take this very seriously. It's not just an academic issue. And so what we're trying to do today is to prepare you to avoid making that career-ending error later on. All right, how many of you are familiar with the, the good cop, bad cop uh, technique? Can you describe it? Me real quick. Okay, so how is this? Um, um, it, and somebody plays a um, good cop, then that means uh, he can uh, find a fastball out of the. Um, uh, out of a certain um, situation, right? Okay. It, it's good cop, bad cop is a technique that the police use to interrogate people. They'll start out with this really, really obnoxious, mean police officer who comes in and he or she is insulting and mean and threatening and really offensive. And then the other person comes in and says, oh, no, no, you can't talk to, the, to this person that way. And they push that person out. And then the good cop comes in and talks and tries to be your friend and to help you out. And, and well, today Dr. Mark's got to be the bad cop and I get to be the good cop. <clears throat> we want to give you tools. The university has standards that we expect students to perform to. There are standards as to how you write. There are standards of how you go about documenting the information that you use. We want you to read books, read journals, read newspapers. We want you to learn about the subjects that you're studying and go outside of what's in the textbook and bring in additional material. And when you do, we want you to document where that information came from. And there are multiple reasons to do so. The first reason is it makes your paper stronger. It's not just your opinion. It's based on published research or theory from the folks who are the professionals, the people that are, they're like us. They're faculty in universities. They're professionals working in the business world who have great levels of experience and are sharing that expertise with you as students. It makes your paper stronger because it shows that you're not just making it up, that you are taking ideas that you learn from other sources and you're putting those ideas together and developing your own opinion, your own theories, your own ideas. So one reason that you want to, to document the source of the information that you take is, is to make your paper stronger. Another reason is a little bit selfish on our part. When we as faculty conduct research, do you think we get paid extra when we publish a paper? No. The answer is no. In fact, we are expected to publish, we are required to publish research as a part of our jobs, but there's no additional payment for that. We have to be able to arrange our schedules to get the time to do that. And so one of the ways that we get recognized is when students like you or when other researchers read the work that we've published 
and cite that and borrow the ideas and use it in their work in their papers. So another reason that you want to cite is it's because you owe a debt to the people who did the real work. A research study, you know, you pick up a journal and, and there seem there are thousands of journals, right? You go to the library and it's just wall to wall full of books. But it takes a lot of time to produce that. To publish one journal article is a process that can take between one and four years to publish one journal article. There's a lot of work that goes into that. And so you really should give credit to the person who did that work, who came up with those ideas, who, who conducted that research, because that's, that's kind of how we get paid back on it. It's not a financial thing, but hopefully we do get some recognition. I'm hoping Safe Assign is going to do its thing today. Must be really hard to check. Well, fortunately, while we're waiting on Safe Assign, you created a safe assignment. The students have turned in their papers. You've waited 24 hours. Now you'd like to see the results. As with most things in Blackboard, you started the control panel. The safe assignment is actually here in the assignments folder where to look at this paper no plagiarism, safe assignment. The student submitted it by going to this link. But to see the results, you go to the control panel, and there's a safe assignments link in your course tools section. You click on save assignments, and then you click on the view link for the assignments, the safe assignment that you'd like to review. There's a download button here that lets you download all of the original papers, or you can click here to view any one of the papers in their raw Word document forms. But what we're looking for is the checking that Safe Assignment has done. Without even looking at the results, I can hop over to this column and see this paper had 0% matching, this paper had 4%, and this one 8%. Let's take a look at the 4% paper. I click on View. I wait a second. And up comes the Safe Assignment Report. 4%, I can see the, who submitted it, the author of the paper. See the name of the file, the actual .doc file that was submitted. I can see that it found two cases on the internet where matching was located. Notice he did I not say plagiarism. He said match. And I find the matching. Each line that is matched is in a color that tells you which one of the documents up at the top it matched against. I can click on any one of those. I get a link to the matched document. I get a matching score for that sentence. I get the actual text. In the uploaded manuscript that the student submitted, I get the internet source text. So I can sit right there and look at it and see what kind of use of the internet source this student has made. That was from a teacher's perspective. That's how the professor would see the see the work check. Is that correct? That is correct. And this is this is still doing its thing. So notice he said there were two areas that were matching. He didn't say there were two instances of plagiarism. Let me tell you how Safe Assign works. The company has a huge database. They actually have multiple databases. There is the large database, 
And then there is a second database that is unique to Lawrence Technological University. In the database, they have scanned in millions of books, journal articles, newspaper articles, music, art, television. They have many, many different sources that a student might potentially encounter and try to use in a paper. And they have digitized all that so that when you submit your paper as a Word document or as a PDF file, their software reads down through your paper and looks for matching patterns of groups of words in your paper and compares it against those two databases. And when it finds a match, notice I'm not saying plagiarism, when it finds a match, it's, it highlights that section and gives a report saying, this information appears that it may have come from this source. Now notice he had three papers, one had 0% matching, 4% matching, 8% matching. Uh, a moment ago, Dr. Stavros said, you'll probably never have zero. If you do your research correctly, you won't have zero. Because SafeAssign will identify the sources that you used. And when you get your report, it won't be zero because it will say, this information appears to have come from this source. This information appears to have come from this source and it will give you a report and that report is the percentage of the lines in your paper that appear to come from another source. So if you're out writing a research paper, you're going to read books, right? You're going to read journals and you will provide a citation for those within the paper that you write. SafeAssign doesn't care if you cite or not. It doesn't check. SafeAssign simply asks, is there information in this paper that appears to have come from another identifiable source? And if it says that there is, then you'll get a report and you as a student can see that report and your job is to determine whether you have given credit to the original source. Does that sound fairly simple? So this is a tool that we want to give to you. Now, just like any kind of a tool, it cuts both ways. We can make the tool available to you as students, and you can run your paper through Safe Assign before you turn it in to me for a grade. And you can look at the report and say, wow, I forgot that, this, that the information in this paragraph came from that one book. I didn't cite it, and I don't have it in my reference section of my paper and you can go back and fix your paper, correct it, and then turn it in for a grade and feel confident that you have given credit to the sources of all of the information that you've used. Yes, sir. Right, so, um, uh, so, now going back to the matching, uh, 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 so, if I remember correctly, uh, so when I had turned in one of my paper two through Safe Assign, uh, Safe Assign, excuse me, um, um, I noticed that in some particular reason, um, it highlighted the sources as well. Well, of course, because those references, you're talking about the end of the paper, the reference section? Yes. Other people will have cited those same sources, and it will be a part of a paper that they submitted, and it's a part of the database. And so uh, that's another reason why you aren't going to have 0% in a research paper. If your research paper comes back 0% match, you haven't done your job. If your research paper comes back 76% match, you, you haven't done your job. <laughs> you still have some work to do. And you need to get busy in, in making sure that you're expressing your ideas and that you're giving credit for 
the ideas that you borrow from other sources. Maybe Safe Assign is running slowly today, or maybe it's not even running. I submitted a paper yesterday and it didn't read it. it yes. So the question is, I have a question. So you said that the seventy-six percent can run jobs. When what was the percentage when you did the job? That is a great question, <laughs> and there is no answer. Because <laughs> I, the reason why I ask that is because we had one teacher. He said. You got to do some firewall management. And he said, just do what, do what you like. So we put the guy put together something, and then he, I, I did it. And then he said, if it's more than 50%, I'm going to do use. Let's turn it in. We're going to get you guys for pictures. But then he, when I submitted it, he said, oh, you took my guy's stuff without citing. I did cite it. So I was saying, he said, I might submit you to the dean. I'm like, OK, wait a minute. You didn't give us a percentage. You didn't tell us what to use or not to use. So if he's going to come at me, I'm going to come back at him. So I just want to know what's the percentage. So I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, there, there isn't an easy answer to that. Yeah. Um, if, if, you're, if you're writing a research paper, what do we expect you to do? Go out and read and learn and tell us what you learned. So that means that when you're writing a research paper, Many of the ideas in that paper are going to come from other sources. Is that fair? <laughs> and uh, exactly. If you already knew all of that, then you haven't done your job. You haven't gone out and learned something new. You haven't fulfilled the purpose of the assignment. Um, as far as a percentage is concerned, there isn't, I, personally, there's not a number that I'm looking at. When I look at the reports, I look at the reports, all of them. And I'm interested in several things. I'm interested in, are the students, not only are they providing the proper citation, but are they, if they're quoting material from an original source, is it obvious that it's a quote? Is it encased in quotation marks? Is the citation correct with the author's name, the year of the publication, and the page number? And is the paper, two-thirds of the paper is quotations. That, that for me is an enormous red flag. So I want to talk a little bit about when you might want to quote. I have three rules of thumb for when I will use a quote, and I'll share them with you, and I strongly encourage that you use these. The first rule is the he got it or she got it perfect rule. And that means the original author wrote something so well, so perfectly, that I don't believe that I could capture the meaning in my own words. And when I come across something that is so beautifully written that I don't think I can explain it in my own words, then I will take that quote from the original and put it into my paper, put it in quotation marks with a proper citation, the author's names, the year of the pub publication, and the page number to show that it's a quote. Now, how often do you think that happens? How often does somebody get it perfect? Not very often. So that probably won't happen very often for you. The second rule of thumb for when to use a quotation if you want to borrow another person's definition, especially if it's a term that is not commonly known, or if it's a common term, but they're giving it a different definition, that's a good time for you to quote. And once again, you put the quote, encase it in quotation marks with the citation, the author's name, the year, and the page number. The third time that I would quote, I call it, blame it on the other guy. Once in a while, you will read something, and it just doesn't seem right. It seems counterintuitive. That's the opposite of what I would think. What do you mean that women in Ghana are, on average, two inches taller than men in Ghana? That seems very unlikely to me. So if I read a paper, and it gave that statistic, I'm blaming it on the other guy. I'm going to put the statistic in quotation marks 
and put the full citation with the name of the author, the publication year, and the date. And if the person reading my paper has a question about that, they know where they can go to find out whether or not I got it right. So those are my three rules of thumb. It's perfect, borrowing a definition, or blame the other guy. Outside of that, you won't see me use quotes. If you turn in a paper and your paper is half quotations, you haven't done your job. One of the reasons that you're here in graduate school, one of the objectives of all of our programs in the College of Management is that we will help you to become effective communicators, both oral communicators and written communicators. Anybody here play golf? How'd you learn how to play golf? What do, you want to, what do you have to do if you want to get better at playing golf? You have to practice. Do you practice tennis to get better at golf? No. Oh, okay. Anybody here? Um, any sports? Basketball. Basketball. If you want to get better at basketball, what do you have to do? Play basketball. We're asking you to become good writers. What do you have to do? Write and write and write some more. You're going to write in every class that you're in while you're here. You'll write term papers. You'll write exams. You'll write case studies. You'll write uh, in a lot of different contexts. The way to become an effective writer is to write. And if you're, half of your paper is quotations from other people, what did you learn about writing as a result of that? Nope. About half of what you should have. And so we will expect that when you turn in a paper that it's your ideas, it's your writing, and in those instances where you're borrowing someone else's ideas, you give them credit for doing so. When it's necessary to quote, quote. But you don't want a paper that's all quotations put together like a patchwork quilt. Yes? That's a question. Um, see, sometimes you said the quotes get if you have, you don't put the quotes, then you put a footnote at the end of it, you know, because that's what I always try to keep track of. You said good to have, when you cite it, you cite it, but sometimes I used to put a footnote so that at the bottom of that part that I took is at the end so you know where it's coming from. Okay, you're actually jumping ahead of us a little bit. What you're talking about refers to uh, the proper way of citing information in APA style. APA style doesn't use footnotes. It uses internal citation, and we'll talk about that in the next section when we switch over. Yes? So, so we talked a lot about citations, and right? we talked about it more. Yes. When we cite things, is it true that you could have more in your bibliography than you cite? No. no. Every idea fact, figure, picture, whatever you take that you borrow from someone else and, go and you put into your paper, there's a citation in the paper, there's a reference in the reference section. So every citation is in your reference section, and every single reference is something that's included in your paper, and you cited it. So there's a perfect match between your citations and your references. So you can have, let's say, let's say you have six journals, six journal papers or yes. articles that you read. And you use those. You have all six in your bibliography, and you get multiple citations of those articles in your paper, correct? That's correct. Okay. So you might refer to a paper uh, two or three different times, or a theory multiple times throughout your paper. You'll cite it each time in the paper, but in the references, it only occurs once. But there's a perfect match between your citations and references. Every citation has a matching reference, and every reference has at least one matching citation. Yes, sir? Yeah, because when you said you might go to that idea, one, one time I was doing it, I had to put it on one time. But in Word, if you keep doing it, boom, 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 it may show up on, like you said, on that bibliography, like, I forgot how to do it, you just do it once. Because if you do it once, like I'm talking about learning stack management, but you may say management 10 times, 
the soul scrape my head one, 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 ten times. So you don't want to read it like that because he's got doing. So I, I always wonder how do you organize it in words so you just do it once and not hit it. So that way when you read it, you don't look like you. Well, the nice thing about it is you don't have to let word do it. Okay. When, and, and we'll talk about how to, to do the internal sighting in just a bit. Did you have a question also? Oh, okay. Before we move on to, the, to talk about APA, is there, are there any questions about what constitutes plagiarism? Yes. So that, that, I understand plagiarism. I've been a long time since I've been in that kind of environment. Okay. And that used to be some tools and stuff. And when I wrote papers, it was more manual. But the way I learned is, and I just want clarification, so we're, we're using these articles, books, things like that, to really bolster and put together and reinforce what we're trying to share. So if we have an idea, an opinion, hey, I saw this over here, and I added it to this, and here's my idea. So we're reinforcing, that's why we're citing, and we're checking, and we're making sure that we give credit to those authors, correct? Yes. But it's still just using that as a tool to reinforce right. what we're trying to say. This is my philosophy about the three levels of education. Undergraduate students learn theories. Master's level students critique and contrast and compare theories, and doctoral students create their own theories. So if, if you're here as an MBA student, we're interested in how you feel about a particular theory. If you disagree with the theory, that's perfectly acceptable. There's nothing that says that this theory is correct just because it's been published in a book or in a journal. If you have reason to question the theory, explain why, and go out and find some supporting evidence. I think that's your job as a graduate student. Undergraduate students learn theories. Master's level students critique, compare, and contrast theories. And doctoral students create new theories. That's my take on education very, very briefly done. Before we move on, are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Do we want, or do, do you have a policy in your classes where you ask students to put like a disclaimer on the end of their paper that says that they have not plagiarized? I don't ask students to do that because it is an assumption of all of our students. We've asked all of you to sign the academic honor code, and you are held to the academic honor code regardless of whether you put that disclaimer on your paper. What I personally don't want to see on your paper, I don't want to see the disclaimer. I don't want to see the Lawrence Tech logo. I don't want to see a lot of extraneous information. I want to see you write effectively and share with me what you've learned as a result of that assignment. Is that fair? Any other questions before we move on? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm hoping that it will come up here and we can take a look at it, but... Well, it's not letting me do that. It still hasn't moved on and, and we will... Uh, let, let's go ahead and talk a little bit of, about APA and then perhaps we'll have the opportunity to come back and check it one more time. Maybe we'll get lucky.